the uh, applicant for 415, I think, is going to be talking. Thank you so much, Tess. Um, just for commissioners, uh, probably what I'll go ahead and do is when we wrap up the staff report and uh, go. As well at that time. For everybody, um, since they don't have a presentation. And I'm not sure. I'm going to try. Uh, but Jenny was calling. Hi, this is Commissioner Maxwell. Um, can you guys hear me? Yep. For some reason, my video is not working, so I'm going to try and fix that. But just in case, I'm here. I, um, I, I don't know why. I know, but I don't know why my video is not working. I'm going to work on it. Okay, so it is 7 o'clock. Um, would you like to start? Uh, okay, I'm going to start the streamer. <laughs> Give me about 15 seconds. Hey, it's seven o'clock and I'm gonna go ahead and call the March 17th meeting of the City of Santa Cruz Planning Commission to order. Uh, clerk, can we have a roll call please? Commissioner Conway. Here. Greenberg. Here. Kennedy. Aye. Maxwell. Here. Here. Phoebe Miller. Here. Different? Here. Here, Dawson. Here. Thank you very much. Um, looks like we have a full house, so no absentees. Um, so do we have any statements of disqualification for this evening? We have two items on the agenda, uh, a green building ordinance, and then um, an item, a public hearing for pool 15 natural bridges. Any disqualifications? Yeah, I'm not disqualified, but I just had some ex parte communication with the architect on the housing one. I talked to Tom Thatcher and said, can we get any more housing on this site? And he said no, but I shouldn't have called him and, and regretted it. So it was a quick conversation the other day. Okay, thank you for reporting that. Um, uh, staff, do we need to do anything else other than note that? No, I'll just remind all commissioners that um, for um, quasi-judicial matters such as permits, um, ex parte communications are prohibited. Um, you can speak to the public if it's a legislative action such as a code amendment, but for permits, um, uh, the bylaws prohibit that. Okay, great. Uh, looks like uh, Commissioner Conway may have a question or something to add. No, I just wanted to say I also was referred by the planner to developer to ask a couple of questions about the management plan and about potential supportive services. So I had a brief conversation and asking those questions. Okay, thank you. Um, looks like uh, Commissioner Schifrin has his hand up uh, for this uh, statements of disqualification. Go ahead, 
Commissioner Schifrin. Yes, yeah, um, I'm on the board of the County Housing Authority, focusing in for bridges, and so I'm uh, going to call for myself to avoid any conflict or appearance of conflict given my service on the Housing Authority Board. I'll just turn off my uh, video, turn off my uh, speaker with that. I can come to not participate in any way. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I was having a little trouble with your audio. It might be my feed, but um, just wanted to let you know, Commissioner mm -hmm. Schifrin. Okay, moving on. Um, we're moving on to oral communications. This is the time when members of the public can address the Planning Commission for agenda or for items that are not on the agenda tonight, but are under the purview of the Planning Commission. So at this time, if you would like to address the commissioners, the commission uh, for an item that is not on the agenda tonight, uh, please raise your hand and we will call on you and you will have three minutes. Give a little bit of time here for the delay. Um, and if you are on the phone, you can uh, press star nine to raise your hand. Clerk, I am not seeing any raised hands. Can you confirm that for me, please? I do not. Okay, great. Moving right along. Uh, next item on the agenda is the cons consent uh, public hearing for a citywide project number A22001, Green Building Ordinance Amendment. Uh, first order of business is to ask any commissioners if they would like to remove this item from the consent agenda. Seeing none, we will now open it up to the public. Does any members of the public want to remove this item from the consent agenda? If so, please raise your hand or if you're on the phone, press star nine. I again am seeing no hand. Uh, can you confirm that, clerk, please? That is correct, or no. Thank you so much. So uh, at this time, I would be happy to entertain a motion um, uh, regarding the Green Building Ordinance Amendment. Um, <laughs> so uh, I think I heard okay, Commissioner, I'll second it. <laughs> okay. Commissioner Kennedy moves to approve Commissioner Schifrin second. Uh, clerk, can we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Conway? Aye. Greenberg? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. Well? Aye. Aye. Prince? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Moving on to a public hearing for 415 Natural Bridges Drive, project number C. P twenty one zero zero five nine. Can we please have a staff report? Yes, thank you. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Let me just share my screen and start the slideshow. Okay. Okay, so um, this is a project submitted by the Housing Authority. They have applied for a plan development permit, design permit, coastal permit, and lot line adjustment permit to construct a 20 unit single room occupancy, AKA SRO project that will be 100% affordable to very low income tenants. The project requires two hearings, one with the Planning Commission and one with the City Council. The Planning Commission will provide a recommendation to the City Council who will make the final decision on whether or not to approve the project. There are a number of general plan policies that support the pro proposed project that are detailed in the staff report. Um, these policies relate to goals to provide affordable housing, um, to promote development of smaller housing units, um, promote infill development, and to facilitate the efforts of nonprofit organizations. 
Um, so I'll start with a quick overview of the requested permit. The first is a plan development permit. The intent of this permit is to strike the balance between a um, proposed public benefit and requested variations from permitted uses or permitted or, um, or development standards. Um, and as a result, to have a project that more fully implements the goals of the general plan um, than would otherwise be possible with a project that just meets all of the standards. So in this case, the public benefit is that a project will be 100% affordable to tenants at a very low income level or 50% AMI. In exchange, the applicant has asked for a variation to the permitted uses of the zone district to allow the SRO use on the site. They're also asking for variations to development standards, including um, for building height, setbacks, and for the number of required parking spaces. The project also requires approval of a design permit, um, which is required to be in conjunction with a plan development permit, and it's also required for any project um, that involves the construction of three or more residential units. The design permit will review the quality of the project design, the site layout, and the compatibility with the surrounding area. The site is also located in the coastal zone and requires approval of a coastal permit. The overall intent of the coastal permit is to protect coastal resources. And because the project is proposing to obtain land from the adjacent property to the west, a lot line adjustment permit is required. So the project as you can see um, in the middle of the screen bordered by the red line. It's a vacant lot on the west side of Santa Cruz on Natural Bridges Drive. It's pretty much completely surrounded by commercial and industrial uses. Uh, you can see the railroad tracks above the site to the south. And then to the west, we have Moore Creek and Antonelli Pond about um, 500 feet to the west and southwest. The project site is zoned RL. Um, which is in, which accommodates single and low density multifamily um, dwellings. Um, but the surrounding area is zoned IG per two, which is industrial zoning. In addition, the adjacent property to the west is zoned public facilities and currently has a total fitness gym. The site RL zoning designation um, <laughs> accommodates a range of single and low density multifamily residential uses, but does not allow SRO development as a list use. So as part of a plan development permit, the applicant is requesting a variation to the allowed uses in order to allow the SRO use. So when the SRO ordinance was first developed and put into place, SROs were intentionally left out of the RL zone district um, due to potential compatibility issues with these lower density residential units that you would find um, in an RL zone neighborhood. Um, so typically staff would not support an SRO use in the RL zone, but in this case, it's the only RL zone lot completely surrounded by commercial uses. So there's no, um, that, that potential impact is just not there. <clears throat> in addition, um, since the SRO projects are exempt from the density restrictions that would apply to a regular apartment project, allowing an SRO use here um, would provide for more affordable housing units than would be allowed if the applicant just pursued a standard apartment building. Um, here they're applying for 20 units, whereas if they just did a regular apartment building in the RL zone, they would get maybe nine units for the most. <coughs> okay, so um, the project is about 250 feet from the outer riparian edge of Moore Creek. Um, and about 500 feet from Antonelli Pond to the southwest. Um, while this is not especially close, um, the proximity of the site to the watercourse is what um, is causing the site to be located within the appealable zone of the coastal zone. And therefore, it's the main resource of focus that um, we would evaluate with regard to the coastal permit. Uh, because the project is pretty far away from the stream and pond, the only potential impact is really limited to any water quality issues from um, um, construction or any stormwater runoff that would happen um, once the project is constructed. Um, the Public Works Department has reviewed the project for consistency with the city's construction, stormwater VMPs, and low impact design requirements for stormwater runoff. And the project has been found to be consistent with these requirements. Um, the project is conditioned to follow all requirements, so that will ensure that the water quality um, 
of Moore Creek and Antonelli Pond will not be impacted by the project. So here we're looking at the site plan. Um, there's a well landscape front yard area that includes walking pathways, um, seating areas, and also some street trees. Um, there's also bicycle parking at the front of the site. And then the vehicle parking is located at the back away from public view. Um, the building, the project needs minimum driveway requirement on the south side of the lot. And you can see the building kind of butts right up against that driveway. And as a result, it does not meet the setback on the north side of the property. Um, so as part of the plan development permit, the applicant is requesting to reduce the northern side yard setback to seven feet, two inches, where a 12 foot setback would otherwise be required given the height of the building. Um, this might cause a little bit of additional shading on the existing office building to the north, but there's no residential building um, that the reduced set setback would affect um, negatively in terms of shading or privacy. Um, so overall, it's not, it's not really a big impact. Um, the project also proposes 12 parking spaces, which is less than the 20 that would be required for a 20 unit SRO project. Um, it's one space per unit. The public works department has reviewed the site layout and support the proposed number of parking spaces. Um, they do not have any concerns about any impact um, to the on-street parking in the area. You can also see the existing property boundary going um, north to south through the proposed parking area. Um, so the project proposes to transfer 4,054 square feet of land from the total fitness site to the west um, to this site in order to provide parking for the SRO use. Um, this will remove some existing parking spaces um, that are on the total fitness site. Um, however, that site will still have more um, than enough spaces once this land is transferred. The project will also require removal of four heritage size trees. There are five heritage size trees on the site. Um, a heritage tree is considered 14 inches in trunk diameter at 54 inches above grade. <clears throat> the applicant submitted an arborist report prepared by Maureen Ham, which evaluated the trees and provided recommendations the report found that the heritage cedar tree at the northern end of the property um, was in healthy condition, recommended retention with measures to protect the tree during construction. The other trees are found to be in poor condition with issues such as decay, structural problems, or infestation. And these trees are also within the development footprint. And so these trees are recommended for removal. So the arborist has reviewed the report and agrees with the recommendations. Uh, the heritage tree ordinance requires replacement trees at a ratio of one 24 inch box tree or 315 gallons for each heritage tree removed. Because the site is located in the coastal zone, LCP policy CD 6.1.2 requires this ratio to be doubled. Um, so we have a condition of approval requiring um, the replacement trees at this ratio or payment of an equivalent in lieu fee. Um, so here's a, a snapshot of the first floor plan, um, just to show you some amenities that the SRO project um, is providing. Um, SRO projects are required to provide a few amenities that normal apartment buildings are not required to have. Um, so we have a manager's unit. We have a common area room. Um, there are storage units for each dwelling unit, and these storage units have dimensions that can also fit a bicycle. Um, there's a laundry room. And then each dwelling within the project has a closet, a full bathroom, and a kitchen. The SRO development is also required to have a management plan, and a condition of approval will require the finalized management plan to be submitted prior to building permit issuance. It's a rendering of what the picture will look like from natural, I'm sorry, what the project will look like from natural bridges drive. Um, the architectural design includes a mix of exterior materials, including stucco on the first two floors and um, vertical siding on the top floor um, and metal balcony railings and roof parapet. The proposed building height is 30 feet to the top of the highest point of the roof. The height standard for the RL zone district is 30 feet, 
So at 36 feet, the proposal is asking for six additional feet, which is 20% greater, and that's the maximum increase that can be requested with a plan development permit. This increase will allow for higher ceiling um, within the units to help make the units more livable. And it also allows for the um, proposed articulation in the roof line, which makes for a really nice looking building design. So this is the south elevation, which would be uh, visible from Natural Bridges Drive from the south and also from the railroad right of way. Um, from this view, you can see the building still has a well articulated design and it continues the same color and material streams on the front of the building. This is the north side of the building, um, a little bit less articulated, um, but most of this building will be blocked from public view by the um, office building that's on the property adjacent to the north. So you're really only going to see um, kind of the tip of the building that's on the left side of the screen here. And then here we have the back side of the building um, that faces the parking spaces. Again, you can see the design is consistent all around the whole building, um, while the details and articulation are more focused on the sides that are visible to the public view. And this elevation also shows the side yard setback line, which is the diagonal dashed line. Um, it increases at a rate of one foot of setback per three feet of height. Um, the proposal includes a reduced side yard setback on the north side of the building, which is the left side of this drawing. So as you can see, um, the standard setback line just clips through the top half of the third floor and part of the roof line. So it's a relatively small part of the building um, that actually encroaches into that standard setback. Okay, so here's just a few pictures of um, the surrounding area. On um, the, the top left, we have looking at the project site and then south across the railroad track. And then the top right, you see that two-story office building um, to the north. And then on the bottom, we have a side-by-side -side of the proposed building with the office building. And the proposed building is a little bit bigger, um, but it still fits in generally with the scale um, of the existing building on the adjacent site. And then here we have looking across the street to the north, we have a very big um, two-story industrial building, and then looking to the south, we see railroad tracks and then a smaller industrial building. So overall, um, the proposed building is pretty compatible with the surrounding built environment um, in terms of its scale, its height, and its proposed design. If anything, it's going to look a lot nicer. Um, so <clears throat> overall, the feedback from the community has been positive for this project. The applicant held a community meeting for this project on June 28th of last year, which was required um, as this is considered a medium development project under the city's community outreach policy. Eight people from the public attended the meeting and expressed support for the project. The applicant has reached out to me with a concern about um, condition of approval number 17. This condition requires electrical transformers to be placed underground. The applicant has indicated that it may be possible prohibitive for the housing authority to do this and they requested to allow the transformer to be placed above the ground. Um, therefore, I propose um, the condition to be revised to state all utilities shall be placed on the ground in accordance with the provisions of section 2412-700 through 2412-740 of the zoning ordinance. Transformer boxes shall be placed on the ground to the extent feasible. Any transformer boxes placed above ground shall be shown on final building permit plans with the location and visual screening approved by the planning department. So in summary, uh, the project meets the findings for the lot line adjustment, plan development permit, design permit, and coastal permit, and it does not need any further CEQA review um, pursuant to public resources code CEQA section 2108.3.3 as it is fully consistent with uniformly applied measures under the general plan and municipal code. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission recommend the approval of the project by the City Council with the revised condition number 17. This concludes my presentation and I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you so much for that report. Um, could we go ahead and stop sharing the screen and come back to the school commission? Uh, commissioners, this is a time when we could go ahead and ask any clarifying questions from staff. 
Um, I do see the applicant on the line, and this would be also a time where we could go ahead and ask any questions directly of the applicant. So any clarifying questions about this project from any commissioner for either the applicant or staff. Okay, uh, seeing none, um, we can go ahead and open uh, the public hearing. And this is a time for the members of the public to go ahead and address the commission regarding this item for 15 natural bridges. Uh, any members of the public who wish to speak, please raise your hand now. If you're on the phone, you can press star nine and you will have three minutes. Like uh, we got one hand up. Um, clerk, could you go ahead and unmute and please identify yourself if you choose and you will have three minutes. Um, if you're speaking, you're there. You go. Okay. Sorry, this is Tom Thatcher. Um, I'm here with Matthew Thompson. Uh, we're the designers. Louder. Louder. Okay. Uh, Tom Thatcher and Matthew Thompson here. Um, we are the designers of the project. Um, uh, Bill Kemp's office is going to be taking over the construction documents. So if there are uh, real technical questions, they may be better answered by him, but uh, we can certainly uh, available to answer questions about the design. Um, I'd like to um, just uh, give a shout out to uh, uh, Clara. She was really a trooper and up with us for a couple of years of getting through this. It was a complicated project trying to find the right uh, way to, uh, you know, process it. And um, uh, she just answered innumerable questions and, and uh, was, a, was a great help. So um, uh, thank you, Clara. Um, so, you know, from the beginning of this project, it was important for the Housing Authority and us that the, the um, yeah, quality building, quality in terms of, of building plans and, and design and materials. Um, as, as Clara mentioned, we we're asking for the uh, increase because we want to do nine foot ceilings in, in the units and therefore get um, windows and doors up to eight feet, get as much glass as we can uh, instead of the, the normal, at least for a low income apartment building, might be eight feet. Um, and uh, we uh, uh, have a, a really generous front yard landscaping plan. It's really a beautiful landscaping plan. It's got nice outdoor. Yeah, seating areas, and, and uh, uh, I think uh, Megan Bishop, the landscape architect, did a really nice job with the landscaping on this project. Um, we uh, have increased, uh, I think as far as mentioned, we have increased the um, uh, amenities on the interior of the building, the common area space. We have more, uh, considerably more space in the common areas than are required by the zoning ordinance. Um, and uh, we have provided these generous um, storage areas, um, also more than what is required by the by the, uh, the zoning ordinance. And uh, so all in all, we think this is gonna be a really, really nice place to live. It's uh, you know, right down the block from Natural Bridges Park. Um, total fitness is right around the corner. Um, bus stop across the street. Farmer's market down the street. Uh, easy walking distance, bike trail right out the door. Um, so uh, we think this is really going to be a quality place to live. So um, that, that's what I'm going to say right now. I am available for questions, and if you have any, uh, feel free to shoot. Um, but I know Jenny Panetta, the executive director, should be online and um, and would like to make some comments as well. Okay, thank you, Tom. Um, I do see Ms. Panetta on the line. Um, we'll go ahead and have uh, three minutes and uh, go ahead, please. Thank you. Good evening, Chair Dawson and members of the commission. My name is Jenny Panetta. I'm the executive director of the Housing Authority and I'm really excited, <laughs> really excited to be here tonight in support of our proposed affordable housing development on Natural Bridges Drive. We all know that the need for affordable housing 
is just so much greater than what we have available to us in our community. The Housing Authority estimates that over 30,000 households in Santa Cruz County are income eligible for affordable housing, but less than 25% of eligible households have access to it. So clearly there is an urgent need for affordable housing of every type and every size. But at the Housing Authority, we've noted a particularly acute need for smaller units. There are over 12,000 households on our Housing Choice Voucher waiting list. Most of the applicants on our, on our waiting list, about 7,500 of them, are one or two person households. With the greatest portion of those applicants, over 4,200 applicants being single person households. So the need for these smaller units is very real. I also wanted to add that this development represents a huge milestone for us here at the Housing Authority. And while I am very proud of the work that we do in providing rental assistance to thousands of low-income families countywide, we have not actually participated in affordable housing development in decades. So we are really very excited about making this modest contribution to the supply of affordable housing, and we hope that there will be more such projects in our future. So um, yeah, I also want to take a moment to thank Clara for all of her assistance throughout this process, as well as thanking Tom and Matthew, who have really been just such a delight to work with and have held our hands as this is brand new territory for us at the Housing Authority. So thank you, uh, commissioners, so much for your consideration of our project, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you so much. Um, any other members of the public wish to address the commission on this item? I am not seeing any hands. Clerk, just to double check on that. Okay, we'll go ahead and then close the public hearing and bring it back to the commissioners. Um, we do have the applicant available for questions and also happy to entertain a motion um, if, if so moved. Uh, Commissioner Greenberg and then Commissioner Kennedy. Oh, okay, um, well, I was just gonna move that we accept the staff recommendation and approve this beautiful project. I second that. that. <laughs> and I have a I think kind of like was... comment for discussion, but they're not, um, I'm very in favor of moving this ahead quickly, uh, but I do okay. want a chance to speak if possible. Yeah, that absolutely. Sounds yeah, and um, we can discuss, yeah. Cool. Yeah, let's, let's just uh, get the housekeeping first. So uh, moved by Commissioner Greenberg, seconded by Kennedy. I think you beat all the rest of us to the second, so good job on the button there. <laughs> um, so now we're back in front of the commission uh, again for any comments before we go to vote. So there is a motion on the floor to accept the staff recommendation with the amendment uh, for condition of approval 17 as recommended by staff. That's what's on the floor right now for consideration. Do any commissioners have any comments before we go to a vote? Okay, uh, Commissioner Kennedy, I was waiting for your hand there. Uh, go ahead. I can't wait to vote yes on this project. It's great. My only regret is that it's not a 20 story building. And uh, given that it's right here by our future mass transportation train corridor, I think it's super awesome that this project is going in right there. Um, I'm not the landscape architect. I wonder if a big heavy wall or a screen is better on that side of the property, but take it or leave it. And before we all vote yes, I just wanted to point out my background. This is the El, El Palomar Hotel, which was tiny units on an innovative transportation corridor, which was the streetcar system back then. So I always think about this and say, hey, people, we've done this before. Let's just do it again. And I just hope the next one of these is bigger. And it's not even possible to be closer to the train corridor. So that's all I have to say. Thank you so much. Um, any other uh, comments before we bring it to vote? Go ahead, Commissioner Conway. 
Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I just want to um, congratulate the Housing Authority um, for your really careful attention on this project. I think it's a beautiful project. And um, <clears throat> it's a relief to have a project um, that in which uh, you're taking the approach to house people off the waiting list that is not targeted. And um, the fact that the Housing Authority is choosing to finance it the way that they are removes any of the concerns I have or, or potentially had um, about uh, the cost per square foot exceeding um, what would be competitive for different public financing techniques. So I really admire the way that you are going about um, uh, building the project and also um, managing and targeting the project. And I want to thank you for, um, for doing this. Great. Um, last call for comments. And then um, I will just, um, I, I would just like to throw in that, I would just like to thank the staff for an incredibly thorough report. I really appreciate the contact in the staff report. Um, that, that seemed very comprehensive. Um, and I, I really appreciate that. I also want to just thank the H Housing Authority and the focus on providing um, not just the space, but an incredibly high quality space. The attention to detail for the green space, higher ceilings, more light um, is, is really admirable. And I'm very excited um, to support this project. So with that, Kurt, can we go ahead and have a vote um, on 415 Natural Bridges, please. Commissioner Conway? Aye. Greenberg? Aye. Kennedy? Well? Aye. C.D. Miller? Aye. Um, and Dawson? Aye. Passes unanimously, uh, which is great. And uh, congratulations to all involved. Uh, this is a really exciting project. So thank you so much for all the hard work. And we will uh, move it along here to informational items. Uh, any informational items? Uh, yes, a couple. Um, so the first reading of the flexible density ordinance was before the council on at its uh, March 8th meeting, and that was approved. So the second reading is scheduled for the March 22nd meeting next week. Um, the permit entitlements associated with the oversized vehicle ordinance um, that you had approved at your last meeting were uh, called up by Council Member Golder. <clears throat> so we are uh, we're expecting that a hearing is going to happen in April for that. So one of the April hearings. Um, and then looking at the uh, schedule for next month, um, there is nothing scheduled for the April 7th meeting, so you can consider that your spring break. And um, <clears throat> But on the 21st, we're going to be um, bringing the objective standards ordinances to you, so that's going to be a pretty um, meaty packet for you to uh, digest and, and um, so that'll be a big item. And that's all I have. Thank you so much. Uh, any subcommittee advisory body uh, or report? Okay. Um, any items referred to future agenda from any commissioners? Uh, yes, Commissioner Kennedy, please. This is not an. Uh, this is just an idea for a possible future agenda item. This is not a political commission, but I've just been thinking about like rail and development and zoning in our trail. And I wonder if chair wants to direct staff to like, you know, bring forward a brief report on the importance of long-term transit solutions. You know, something we could say, hey, this planning commission is 100% behind this at our next meeting. I know we'd be wading into politics, but we're there already. A tiny, tiny town, and I sure feel like it'd be good for us to come out in support of the planning we've already done to support that corridor and the planning we're going to do. And I just wanted to express that because I'm really feeling it this week. So maybe it's too much, but I thought I'd throw it out there. Sure, thank you. Um, uh, Commissioner Schifrin, and then I'll go ahead and go to staff and ask 
kind of what our options may be. Commissioner Schifrin? Commissioner Schifrin, I think we're having trouble with your audio. You can't hear me at all? Yeah, I, I can hear you now. Can others? Okay, go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, just wondering if this is really a, um, a suggestion that maybe we should take a position on this Since um, if it should pass and be implemented, it would uh, eliminate the possibility of rail use on the corridor. So um, I think. Um, the council may, you know, the council has weighed in on the general assurance in support of a rail. I think it's a legitimate thing to ask. I don't know whether the commission has taken positions on ballot measures before, but I think if it's something more general along the lines of what Commissioner Kennedy was suggesting or taking a position on the ballot measure, something that it come before the commission. It's a little bit tricky, I think, for me because I serve on the commission as an alternate. Um, so I might decide not to vote on it, although my actions on the on the, trans, on the regional transportation commission are pretty consistently in favor of uh, preserving the uh, the cheap rail. But you know, I think that it, it is a relevant question to ask staff and. I'm supportive of the direction that Kennedy is suggesting that we move it. Okay, thank you for the input. Um, go ahead, Commissioner Kennedy, and then let's go ahead and go directly for staff after that to see what our options could be along these lines. Go ahead, Commissioner Kennedy. I'm totally sorry, and I, I feel like this should be like a consent item, quick thing, if anything. I am not suggesting we derail the Planning Commission to spend hours and hours on this, but um, that, that was my intent. For sure. Let's let's go ahead and um, see if Mr. Marlette may be able to provide us with a range of options um, based on what you said, and then maybe we can uh, kind of talk about what we may want to pursue. Go ahead, Mr. Marlette. Uh, Mr. Marlette, you are on mute. I've got two mute buttons I'm working with here, so thanks. Um, <laughs> thanks for that clarification, Commissioner Kennedy. Um, I was going to say that this is uh, an item that would likely be handled by our advanced planning staff, and um, right now they're like over their heads in work. In addition to the objective standards uh, work that I just mentioned, they're also working on the downtown plan expansion that's expected to be before you in May. Um, and then housing element work, of course, um, which is also starting to um, intensify um, in the late spring, early summer months. Um, in terms of uh, Commissioner Schifrin's suggestion of um, whether it's within your purview to weigh in on a ballot measure, I, I don't know the answer to that um, right now. Um, I could, you know, check in with the city attorney um, and also review the bylaws a little closer to see, you know, if that's something that we could agendize for you. Uh, so I have a sort of a clarifying question. So instead of going the route of directly addressing the ballot measure, is there an option for us to discuss um, why it uh, why it is more in alignment with the general plan and our approach to transportation to maintain both options moving forward, maintain the option for rail and trail moving forward. So as, as a, a little bit of an end around, instead of saying yes or no for the ballot measure, can we talk about why maintaining both options makes the most sense? Is, is, is that a discussion we can have? And, and what would that look like? Yeah, I, I would want to, you know, before giving you an affirmative answer, I would want to look into to that with the city attorney uh, because I, I, I'm just to be honest, I'm not sure um, if that even falls within your purview, um, you know, as a commission. But I, I'm happy to look into it. Okay, well, 
I think we all, um, I'm seeing some head nods here. I, I think it would be great if you could just uh, report back to us kind of potentially what the options are. Um, I, I think the route of not directly um, weighing in on a ballot measure, but discussing um, more our approach to transportation is kind of what I heard from Commissioner Kennedy, and I'm very much in support of that as well. So um, that would be very helpful if um, we could report back um, at a later date. Sure. Okay, great. Thanks, Eric. I know how busy you are. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, anything else? Uh, is Commissioner Schifrin, is your hand up? Yeah. Uh, the commission is an action body. And, you know, I, I'm sympathetic to staff spending time providing informational items to us that are certainly of interest of not really things that we can act on. So I'm trying to think of, that's why I suggested maybe we could take a vote on the ballot measure, because at least that's taking an action that's a question, although I'm perfectly fine not doing that. Uh, I think there are lots of other forums for where, that, where that's going to happen. I think maybe we need to think a little bit more before we have steps to some work on this about what would be the result of items related to rail being on our agenda? Is it something that would, you know, we could change the zoning ordinance to be supportive? One of the reasons why rail is so controversial um, in the county is because the Board of Supervisors allowed development within 15 feet of the rail line. So obviously, if when a train goes by, um, people are looking in your window, uh, looking in your backyard, it raises concern. So I don't know if there is any relevance for looking at uh, you know, zoning or general plan policy that would be supportive of this green and rail option. But I think that's really what uh, this is about. And I don't remember whether the general plan already has policies that support rail. Um, the county does, so that would be changed. But that's what we really, what did we do to support to um, change the general plan to provide that support? Sorry if I'm not coming. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Schiffen. I had a little trouble with the audio there, but um, I, I I do actually totally take your point and, and support that idea that, you know, we are an action body, so trying to figure out what an action would be, um, I think would be great to include in that sort of analysis of, you know, um, what what might come before us as opposed to just having a discussion where we don't have to take an action. So um, if that seems feasible to you, Mr. Marlette, um, that would be great. I have just one thing to add following up on Commissioner Schiffer's statement. He was saying what, what I was actually thinking. Um, and while he was talking, um, I had quickly pulled up the general plan and, and um, just in my first couple of clicks, found a number of policies that support rail. It's, 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 there's very strong policies in that regard. So, we, you know, the city council essentially, with a recommendation from the planning commission, has already gone on record, you know, supporting that. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we're uh, out on a limb with this one, guys, but I don't want to waste staff time any further. Okay, well, well, why don't we go ahead and, and pull that request back at this point, and, and yep, all of us no can, and all of us can do some homework and think about maybe some part of the zoning ordinance or something that may be um, relevant. And then if we get to that level, um, maybe we can bring it back to making a staff request. Does that sound okay? Okay, great. Um, okay, last call. Um, any items to refer to future agendas? Okay, um, with that, I would uh, like to thank uh, my fellow commissioners and staff um, and the applicants and everyone who attended, and I will go ahead and 
called the March 17th meeting of the City of Santa Cruz Planning Commission into adjournment. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. Here. Bye.